We are back with a bigger, a better, and even more exciting Monday than your last one. Buckle your seatbelts today's Galatians 4. This is the Bible Vlog. All right, so as we've read by now, there are all kinds of parallels between the Old Testament and the New Testament, stuff that you just can't make up that relates back and forth between the two of them. So Paul uses one of these parallels as an example in this chapter, and it's about the story of Isaac and Ishmael. So let me briefly explain what happened in this story for those of you who don't know. So in the Old Testament, God promised Abraham and Sarah that they were going to be parents, and that they would have a son. Now the problem was that both of them were almost 100 years old at this point. So as you can imagine, they found this a little bit hard to believe. So they waited, and they waited, and they waited, and nothing happened. So in a scheme to kind of help God along with what he had told them, Abraham takes a younger woman who was a slave as his wife and then gets her pregnant. Now she gives birth to a son named Ishmael, but this wasn't the one that God had talked about. Finally, just as God promised, Abraham and Sarah, Abraham's original wife, have a son and they name him Isaac. Now before we get into how this relates to Galatians 4, let me say something really important here. Abraham figured that his wife couldn't possibly get pregnant in her old age, so he took a much younger wife so that God's promise to him could come true. Now that seems like an extreme example to us, but many times we find ourselves in the same situation where we're trying to kind of, you know, help God out a little bit. Even if we pretend like we're not doing it, we're kind of trying to force something to happen, but we're still going to give God the credit. Kind of like, good job, God, you did it. Yay! Now listen, this stuff works on your kids when they're little. You know, I remember when my son first started playing soccer and he'd score on his own goal and we'd be like, yay, you scored! Well, that's great if you're four years old, but that's not a good idea to treat God this way. Point being is that God is faithful and he can be trusted. What seems impossible to you is nothing to God. When you trust him fully, that's always when you see the miracles. All right, let's jump back to Galatians. So coming back to Paul, he is again writing to the churches at Galatia, and he makes an interesting comparison. He says that trying to live under the Old Testament is like how Ishmael was born. He was the son of a slave. But living under the promise of Christ is like when Isaac was born, when he was the son of Sarah, who was a freed woman. See, Isaac represents those who trust in Christ, and Ishmael represents those who are in bondage to the law. Now look at what Paul writes in verses 3 through 7. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, and born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Now listen to verse 7. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. No longer indicates that at one point we were all slaves. See, without Christ, we can't call ourselves sons or daughters of God. Without Jesus, all of us live and die by the law. It's what we are judged by, and the bar is set impossibly high. You see, we're slaves to it because we can't can't overcome it. But with the grace that Jesus provides us, we are set free. Listen to verses 28 and 31. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of promise. But as he who was born according to the flesh then persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. See, when you know Christ, our positioning changes with God. He no longer has to measure us by the law, but instead he looks at us through the the lens of Jesus and measures us by his sacrifice. Boys and girls, that is it for Galatians 4. A good one it is. Come back tomorrow for chapter 5, picking it up just like always. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your Monday. We will see you back here first thing tomorrow. I love you guys. We'll see you soon.